Hello, I'm Deacon Jane Mills. Welcome to Falmouth and Gwenapp Methodist Circuit Service for Rural Mission Sunday. We begin with a prayer of adoration. Creator God, maker of all that is, the whole earth is full of your glory. The heavens sing your praises and all creation blesses you. We seek to join in that praise today, worshipping you with glad and thankful hearts. As we worship, open our hearts that we may hear your calling to serve you and all you have made, that your people may hold together in love. Amen. Let us sing our first hymn.
a gospel reading from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 41. Jesus visits Martha and Mary. As Jesus and his disciples went on the way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him in her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat down at the feet of the Lord and listened to his teaching. Martha was upset over all the work she had to do, so she came and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to come and help me. The Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled over so many things, but just one is needed. Mary has chosen the right thing, and it will not be taken from her. Thanks be to God. Thank you to Joyce for that reading. As you engaged with that familiar story today, I wonder if you identified particularly with one of the sisters. Perhaps with Martha, who was distracted by many tasks and frustrated that her sister wasn't helping. Or Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened. Listening today, we may feel that Martha was too busy. So much so that she had no time to listen. Yet we should be careful to judge her without understanding the context. The culture they lived in had many customs for offering hospitality. Plus numerous expectations about the role of women. Just take a look at the good wife wish list in Proverbs 31. She was so exasperated by all she had to do, she interrupts what's happening to ask Jesus to get Mary to help. Jesus though, whose teaching is at odds with such inequality, defends Mary. I wonder if there are roles dictated by society that we sometimes try to impose in our churches. The two sisters have been characterised by the graces of being and doing. Whilst being and doing may seem to be opposites, the Christian life requires a balance of both. If we only worship, we risk becoming separate from the communities in which we meet. But if we become so wrapped up in the busyness of serving, we risk losing our connection with the reason we serve. Each one of us needs fellowship, worship and prayer, and these should be at the heart of our churches in order that we may have time to simply be and listen to God. It is through this that we can recognise the needs and be equipped to do the work asked of us. Many of us will understand and perhaps have experienced the frustration of Martha. There's water to fetch, food to prepare, bedding to provide, But we should also recognise that Mary too serves an important role. Sometimes we all need someone to listen to us. Regardless of his ministry, Jesus is human. And loneliness and isolation are growing problems in our society. Many of our churches rely on a few people who run themselves ragged in order to maintain the building, plan worship and so many other activities. Perhaps at times we need to stop and ask if in our effort to serve what we perceive to be the need Do we sometimes jump straight in to fix it, rather than taking time to learn what it is that is actually required? 
This can be true in all our churches, of course. But today we focus on rural communities where churches often serve an ever increasing role as local shops, post offices, pubs and public transport disappear at an alarming rate. As people become isolated and cut off from services, chapels are becoming the only public spaces. Yet, as we face a decline in Sunday attendance, we risk looking inward rather than outward. In struggling to maintain what we know, we can miss opportunities to reach out, joining with others to fill the growing gaps. The church needs both Martha's and Mary's, and each one needs to recognise the value of the other. If we can achieve that, the over busy may find time to pause, and those with unknown talents, the courage to step forward. The church can grow to become the loving family our communities so desperately need. Let's sing again, all I once held dear. In the confusion and noise of living, you listen, perceiving our deepest needs. At a time of change and loss, you understand our anxiety about what is gone. Amidst the challenges of rising costs, you weep with those who struggle. Through anger 
and misunderstanding, you listen, feeling the pain we hide. Just as you hear the, the bleat of each lost lamb, you long for us to turn to you. As we face the bleak facts of decline, you need us to grasp new opportunities. In our threats, you hear our fears. In our jealousy, you hear a need to be valued. In our lack of forgiveness, you hear the need to be forgiven. We offer you ourselves anew, knowing that you strengthen and sustain us this day and every day. The Lord's Prayer Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Morris and I would like to take this opportunity of our last online service in this circuit to thank people for their welcome and hospitality for us. We moved here at a difficult time and ministry at times has been trying, but we've always had a warm welcome and for that we are truly grateful. So, a final prayer of blessing. May God keep us in the Spirit's care and lead our lives with love. 
May Christ's warm welcome shine from our hearts and Christ's own peace prevail through this and every day. Amen.